Let's solve some quadratics. Um, today, we are not going to solve by factoring. We're going to solve quadratics by taking roots. Um, real simple quadratic would be x squared minus 4 equals 0. We could try to factor this. Um, we could use other methods at our disposal, but anytime we have a squared term and a regular number, let's get the squared term alone. x squared equals 4. Add 4 to both sides. Um, what's the inverse operation to square? How do we undo that? We square root. So x is going to be equal to Whatever number squared gives me 4. We might be jumping up and down saying it's 2, it's 2, it's 2. But it's really positive 2 and negative 2. There are two solutions to this quadratic. If we had x squared equals 9, we can square root both sides. x equals not just 3, but negative 3 also. Um, what if we have x squared equals, I don't know, 32? Square root both sides. Oh no, 32 is not a perfect square. But we do know that we can simplify this into 16 times 2. Notice I included the positive and negative. Because when we square a positive or we square a negative, we'll get 32 as our answer. Let's up the difficulty. 2x squared equals, oh, how about 32. Now notice here, this is a little different than the last problem. There's this 2. It's 2 times x squared. I don't just want a square root. I want to get rid of the 2 first. I have to get the thing being squared all by itself. x squared equals 16. 16 is a perfect square. When I square it both sides, I get x equals plus or minus 4. Um, how about x minus 1 squared equal to... 25. Okay, now, a little bit more complex, a little bit more you have to be careful with here. First question, is there something squared equal to a number? Yeah, we, these parentheses things, we're squaring them and it's equal to a number. Alright, so since that's the case, square root both sides. When we square root a squared, those cancel each other out, they make each other go away, we're left with x minus 1 equals. Now because I square root of both sides, I need plus or minus. 25 is a perfect square of 5. Now we got to ask, is x alone? No, not quite. We have to add 1 to both sides. And again, you got to be careful. x equals 1 plus or minus 5. What that really means is 1 plus 5 or 1 minus 5. So x is equal to 6 or x is equal to 4. Another example. Um, let's try x plus 3. Quantity squared equals um, 8. No, not 8. How about 27? So, something squared equal to number. Square root both sides. x plus 3 equals plus or minus. Square root 27 that simplifies. 9 times 3, so x plus 3 equals plus or minus 3 root 3. It's a 
subtract 2 from both sides, x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus root 3. And unlike the previous example, these two pieces cannot be combined together. They're not like terms. One has a root 3, the other doesn't. This is my answer. It ain't pretty, but that's the answer. Let's do one more example. I'm going to write it down. Pause the video. Let's give it a try. So, 2, parenthesis, x plus 1, quantity squared equals, um, how about 32? Pause the video, give it a try, then we start to see how you do. Now, how many of you caught this? The squared thing isn't the moment. I have to get rid of it times two first. If you missed that part, pause the video, we start to try again. If you caught that, let's keep going. How do we get rid of the squared now? The root both sides. X plus one equals plus or minus four. That's one from both sides. X is equal to negative one plus or minus four. And since those are just plain old or ordinary numbers, X is equal to negative one plus four, or X is equal to negative one minus four. X is negative five, or X is three. 